Okay, Chris. So today we are going to start a very important topic in Kubernetes, and that is about the networking. So if you remember that last time when I mentioned you about uh, this Kubernetes core resources. So if you see, it's not only about Kubernetes core resources; it's about the computing. So your compute requires four resources, which is CPU, RAM. networking and storage and as i mention you that pod since they are ephemeral so if i say pod so they are the ephemeral devices ephemeral devices so that's mean that in any case the pod dies you lose all four resources now out of four resources these two resources if i say Uh, so out of four resources the cpu ram if i lose cpu ram then it's not a big deal for me because i am going to get a new pair of a uh, new set of uh, pod and that will be giving me a new cpu and new ram so that is not an issue i mean that will be automatically taken care by the container technology but to me the most concern issue is this networking and storage see this is where you have a connectivity and this is where you store your data so these two are the most critical things uh, for this container technology so how kubernetes is going to fix this problem that we will see today so we will be talking about the networking and then storage we will be talking in some other class so let's see how this uh, communication happens in kubernetes so if i tell you about kubernetes so so now now i'm not talking about specifically container i'm going to talk about the kubernetes so i told you that in kubernetes we have something called pod so for kubernetes this is the smallest unit this is called pod and inside pod you have you can have one container you can have two containers or you can have three containers question is that how do you decide what containers you put in this so if you remember last time i told you that the containers which you keep in your pod are not different functions so usually try to avoid keeping two different functions in a pod rather than you keep a main container plus some helper containers you can say helper containers or sometime we call them as the side container or side car like this this is sometimes called as side car side container so this is not your main container so if i tell you this is not your main container your main container is this uh, first one and then you have something called helper so these two are basically your helper containers right then similarly you can have one more pod in that pod you can put another set of containers so suppose here also you have some pod some main container so you have this main container and then you have some side containers so when this is the side container so this is your main container this is your side container or we call it a side car so side car is just helper nothing else it does not have its separate functionality rather it is complementing it is complementing the main function so whatever main container you are going to run in your pod the side container is going to help this main container so these two containers will not have some specific different function so question is that how does the connectivity happens in the kubernetes so i told you pod is the smallest unit that means if you see from the kubernetes perspective so suppose you have a node so let me draw a node 
so this is a node and you say this is a real node this is a node so suppose it can be a vm or a bare metal server depending what type of uh, kubernetes you are hosting so if you have a vm based kubernetes you can say vm based kubernetes or you can say kubernetes on bare metal so two type of deployment you have for kubernetes but this node will be going to host your containers uh, sorry pod so in this you have a pod so let's say i have two pods this is pod 1 and this is pod 2 so this is pod 1 and this is pod 2 then you have one more node so let's say this is your neighboring node there also you have two pods like this and then one more pod this is pod 3 and then you have pod 4 so you have total four pods in this pod you have some containers so let's say you have a container then you have two containers similarly you have containers in this pod also and same way you are going to have some more pod containers see the number of containers in a pod is decided by the developer of this application so the application developer will decide how many number of containers he want to keep so here we have so what's going to happen you see this one is container so this is your container and then you have this side container which is part of your pod right. and then let's say you have one more here you have this one so I'm going to show you the connectivity in different cases how this connectivity happens and what are the components of Kubernetes coming in picture and how exactly this Kubernetes is going to solve this problem of connectivity so these are the different uh, containers which are residing in the specific pods so like this we can say and then let me take one more case here so you can see now we have four pods on two different hosts so when i say host means i am talking about two different nodes so let me say this is node 2 and this is node 1 so this is also it could be your vm base but see to make a symmetry so whatever is node 1 is same applicable for node 2 also so you cannot have a mix and match that you are going to host uh, for example you say that i have a vm and then i have a bare metal so i have kubernetes on two different models so that is not possible i mean that thing we cannot do usually we cannot do like that so just a moment. Re repeat that again. You can't do what? Uh, just just a moment. I am just charging my fans. One second. Yeah. yeah. So I am saying that this node one. So whatever concept you use for node one, see you. You have two type of deployment architecture. So I will say we have two type of deployment. of kubernetes one is your vm based and the second one is your bare metal so when you create a cluster so when you say i have a qa create a cluster so that means that will be either vm based or bare metal based 
but you cannot say that you have a mix of vm and bare metals that your cluster has some nodes of vm and some nodes of bare metal to maintain a symmetry we have either a vm based or a bare metal based but not a mix of both of them so that's the reason i was saying that if you say that this node one so you have uh, i mean that was just for your understanding i was telling that this node one could be either this could be an bare metal based deployment or it could be a vm based deployment so whatever node one architecture will be the same architecture for node two also so node one and node two has same architecture same architecture it is not different from node one that was my point now coming to the actual point of this communication so see we have different use cases for communication so the first use case let me list down all the communication scenarios so uh, let's say we have inter inter or i will say not me say inter i will say intra intra pod communication this is type 1 intra pod communication means container to container container to container and remember when i say container to container i am talking about inside pod so i am not saying that the container 1 of your pod 1 is going to talk to container 2 of your pod 3 or something so if you have anything where you need to talk outside of your pod it is called as inter pod communication that is called as inter pod communication so inter pod means that you have pod talking to another pod talking to another and when i say pod talking to another so i am not putting a restriction that pod 1 and pod 2 and pod 3 is separate no when i say pod communication that means all the pods whether it is running on node 1 or it is running on node 2 all of them will come in the same category of interpod so when i say interpod that means i am talking about the complete kubernetes cluster so i am not uh, sticking to one uh, node so that means pod talking to another pod on any node on any node within cluster so within cluster means your pod can talk to another pod on the same host or your pod can talk to another pod on different host but they all come under same category so i am not going to categorize this type of communication then we have a third type of communication where you have pod talking to outside world means you can say outside cluster when i say outside world means outside the cluster so this kubernetes cluster which you have built if you go on to go outside of this cluster then you can uh, have this third type of communication and this type of communication will include both so it will include ingress and egress ingress and egress ingress means incoming whatever packet incoming to your pod incoming to pod and egress is outgoing so packet going outside packet going outside of pod outside of pod that is called as egress so there are two type of communication ingress and egress so this third type of communication is where your pod is talking to outside the cluster so three type of communications we mainly have and to explain more in detail i have very good article i found today morning so i am going to share that link with you and this is the site name that says open source.com and uh, i am not fully aware this site belong to which uh, who is the owner of this site but i found this information on this site as very helpful so i am going to explain you everything from here so i am going to explain on the notepad so let's come to our uh, notepad section so here you can see 
that I have a case where my container can talk to. So I will say I have a case one where container one talking to container two within the pod means it is inside pod. So I am not going outside. Then second case where my pod is going to talk to another pod. So here this pod is going to talk to this pod or this pod can talk to this third one or it can talk to fourth one. Then there is another case I am going to put with some different color. So here something like okay let I'm not sure let me take some different color. So here you have a pod which is going to talk to outside your cluster. So here you have outside. So basically three type of communication we have inter pod, intra pod and pods talking to outside cluster. So let's see one by one all of them. Before we see let's see the networking how a network is assigned to a pod or to a container or to a node. Okay, so I am going to draw a diagram where I will explain you the see this thing whatever I am telling you is there on that article also. So I just want to do draw in front of you rather than show you a picture because that will not give you good uh, I will say uh, good understanding. So here I have this node. So this is my node. This is my node. So what happens? this suppose whether it is a vm or it is a bare metal in both the cases you have an interface which we call it as eds0 so i'm going to have one interface over here and this i'm going to call it call it as eds0 so now i hope you understand this eds0 right chris you have, might have seen this type of networking in your normal Normal scenarios. Right? Yes, yeah, physical interface. Correct. So you have physical interface, and then you have pod, and inside pod you have. So let me first uh, tell you about this intercommunication, where a container is going to talk to another container. So here I'm going to have a container. So this is container. And then let's say I have one more container over here. Right, so like this. So what exactly happens, how the networking is assigned to the devices. So networking, here you have ETS0. So this is your first layer. ETS0 is your first layer. This is your first point of interaction. And this is exactly your interface from where you can go outside your cluster. But here in my case, what I see that, so what happens exactly when you deploy a pod so this pod gets an interface so this pod will get an interface and this is also called as eth0 this we call it as eth0 similarly here also you are going to get a interface to this pod so this is my second pod here i am going to get another one eth0 now what happens exactly this ETS0 is going to so here you have something called virtual ETS0 this virtual ETS0 here we have a bridge so we call it as virtual bridge virtual bridge this virtual bridge is responsible to create different interfaces for each pod so here you have so here you are going to have virtual eth1 and this virtual eth1 is going to be mapped to this eth0 of this pod and here it is going to be connected so like this this virtual bridge is going to have whatever number of pods you are going to host it is going to uh, connect all of these vth this uh, this interface 
so let me put some different color so you can see this is eth0 this is eth1 so all the virtual interfaces are going to be connected to this virtual bridge connected by a virtual bridge this virtual bridge and then you have a kubernetes service coming in picture which is called as kube proxy that's called as kube proxy kube proxy and then you have one more service called as ip table so i'm going to draw here ip table small area but ip table this one so it is like hierarchy so this one is integrated and then it is integrated connected to this and this uh, ip table is connected to your eth0 so this is your node architecture but what happens in the case of container i told you there are something that whenever a pod in kubernetes pod communication it happens on a separate separate network and that is called as pod network so you have a pod network so whenever you deploy a kubernetes you dis, uh, provide a pod network and that pod network is used by for allocating uh, sorry yeah. and that pod network is used to allocate ip so this network is going to allocate unique ip it is going to allocate unique ip to each pod to each pod so what happens so let's assume for time being that this pod is a vm hypothetically no i mean neither it is a virtual vm and neither it is a logical vm hypothetically let's say that this pod is a vm imagine this pod is a vm pod if you imagine like it is a vm so what happens to a vm inside a vm you have interface right you have a interface this interface is called as eth0 usually you get only one interface when you deploy a vm you can have more number of interfaces but that is uh, you can say next level right now let's focus on one in network so you have one network called eth0 which is there by default and this will get an ip so this will get an ip so you have a unique ip for your virtual machine similarly your pod has an ip so your pod gets an ip you get unique ip and this ip will stay with this pod till the time this pod is live is it from the same network yeah it is from the same pod network it is from this pod network so your pod will get an ip from pod network and that ip will be uh, sticking to your pod till the pod is live so the moment your pod is crashed or you say that uh, so see what happens to your vm so when you reboot a vm when you reboot vm what happens you get same ip same ip back right you get back the same ip or if you power off power on whatever cycle you do whether you do reboot or power on power off you get back your ip in case of pod what will happen this pod when it get deleted so you say that restart for your normal understanding let's say called restart or reboot so in that case what happens you are going to get a new pod you got one more pod there it has this eth0 interface and this pod is not same as the old one so this is a new pod this is a new pod and this is your old pod so you can see that if you restart reboot do any type of operation you lose your pod 
and then you get a new set of pod in this new pod you have an interface this ip so if you see previously if you have ip1 for example let's say you get something 10.10.10.2 here when you launch, I mean this pods get restarted or rebooted, you get a new IP. Here you get IP called 10.10.10.3. That means your IP has changed. So which means that whatever communication you are doing from outside or inside or within, you lose everything, right? You lose your information. If anybody is communicating with your pod, then your IP has changed and that person or entity is not aware whether your IP has changed. So that's the problem with Kubernetes or you can say that's the problem with container technology. So that's why Kubernetes is going to fix this problem with the help of networking. So there is something called networking, Kubernetes networking. This Kubernetes networking is going to fix this problem. Fix this problem that you get a new IP every time and that's a problem to anybody who is talking to this pod. Yeah, Chris, you are trying to say something? So that's where OVN comes in play, right? I'm sorry? So that's where OVN comes in play. OVN comes in play, uh, I'm not sure because, uh, see, here you have something I will tell you the different type of uh, methods for uh, like achieving your networking in a Kubernetes. I will be talking about them, uh, but let I just wanted to focus on the intercommunication of your okay. intercommunication of your pod. So see okay. what happens in your yeah. Please go ahead. No, I said go ahead. Okay. Yeah, intercommunication is is important. Yeah. So see this pod, if you imagine hypothetically, it is a VM. So assume that it is, assume that pod is VM. So let's see as a picture. So same way you see a VM, try to see this pod. So that means this pod has an IP. Irrespective that IP gets lost, that is a second topic, secondary. We will discuss later on, but let's see this what happens. So this is a pod or you can say a kind of a VM. Inside this VM, you are going to have different containers. So you have container 1. Then you have container 2. So I'm going to take only case of two containers. So what happens? This is has its own IP. So it has its own IP. And this is an intra communication that means you don't need to interfere, don't need to interfere with the this networking of your host. So this is your host networking, right? Where your host is providing you all these things, this virtual router, virtual bridge, virtual interfaces. Here you are inside sitting inside a container, inside a pod. So this is your boundary. If you see, this is your boundary. So this is your boundary. Here you see, this is your boundary. Means whatever you are going to do, you are going to do inside this. So how it exactly happens? So see, here is something called loop back. You must have heard about something called loop back. Every interface, every VM or every node has something called 127.0.0.1 or called as local host. That's correct, yes. Right. So what happens because this communication is only about your VM1, I mean this is about container 1 and container 2. So what we, what is going to happen in this case? Uh, just a moment, hang on. I'll connect the charger. Okay. So here, this container can talk freely to the second container without any IP because if you see from outside, both container has same IP. 
this allocation of IP by Kubernetes is not given to the containers. So container does not have their own IP. Means container does not have IP. Container has no IP. No IP or port. So there is no IP or port to a container from outside. So if you see this picture, where you have a host, this host has this real networking port. This NIC, you see this is a real NIC and then this is your pod, this one is your pod. So if you see you are talking about inter-pod, internal communication of containers within pod, that means this is a logical, this you see is a boundary and you are going to do everything inside this boundary. Means you don't need to get this virtual Ethernet and then virtual bridge and queue proxy IP table, everything. It is not required because everything is going to happen internally. And if you remember in the starting, I told you one thing that this pod has its own namespace. Namespace means namespace for calling resources. See, always remember why we have a namespace. What is the significance of namespace? Namespace is used to call resources. So whenever you have to call any resource, whether it is any four resources like CPU, RAM, network and storage, you need to get this namespace because that's the only way to call any resource. Now here you see this pod is going to talk internally. That means this is pod namespace. This is called as pod namespace. So when you use this pod namespace, you can talk to your containers. Means you don't need to go outside everything whatever you have been given by your host so if you remember what exactly how this uh, pod or container actually works so if you remember you have an host you have an host operating system and then on host operating system you have this something called as container container one and you see this is container two so what happened this container and this container if you say this is a sing, single pod, so if you call it a single pod, if that means from Kubernetes point of view, this pod is a the isolated, isolated zone. When I say isolated zone means from OS perspective, from OS perspective. So whatever you need to do inside, you don't need to call your operating system host OS. You don't need to depend on your host OS for providing you IP or port or something because whatever is going to happen is going to happen in between. So because this pod has one IP, it has only one IP, only one IP. And that's why any communication happening. So this one IP, if you see is provided to this container also, this container also. So if you want to go outside, take this IP, take this IP if you want to go outside. But if you are sticking inside, you are not going outside, you don't need to have an IP. You don't need to have a port from your host. This is not going to provide you any IP or port. Everything you can do internal communication and how exactly this happens. This happens like if you in your VM, if you see your VM and if you have multiple services. So what you do, you say 127.0.0. 0 0.1 and then you give that port number or your service name and then you land up on the same node and then you give some different port number and then you land up so you do this intercommunication you do this intercommunication means you don't need to go outside everything is there inside so you use this loop back ip this is called as loop back loop back ip that is there for the containers cases so if you see this container communication and if you want to see this container talking to each other in this case you don't have a requirement to have an ip no ip there is no ip let me say like this no ip or port here also no ip or port there is no ip or port Everything is happening on 127.0.0.1 and this is local loop back and this loop back you can talk internally to all the containers. So that's the reason if you remember 
when i told you that when we ship four pods we always try to keep the helper containers in a pod we don't keep two different functionality so what happens that if you put this side container whatever main function it is going to do it is going just need to take help from this side container nothing this is not main function this is not main function this is not main this is main this is your main function it's just an helper so it does not need to have a separate ip or it's not need to like uh, have a separate communication it's just like you can say a very tightly coupled container that just helping your main container and all the communication within your container is going to happen on this loop back ip you don't need to have an external or any type of kubernetes uh, networking you don't need anything it is just internal no netting no proxy nothing no load balancer nothing just you can see very tightly coupled containers very tightly coupled so this is your inter uh, you can say intra intra pod communication this is communication number 1 so is this clear to you chris this first type of communication yeah intra intra communication within yeah the, intra communication uh, of the pod means that internally so, in your pod you have different containers and that they, they are going to talk with this method okay. then we have so they second, talk so so yeah. when they talk and there's no IP, right? Yes. They're using just ARP and MAC. See, even MAC also, when I tell you, one pod, okay, so let me try to show you that, what exactly is the difference See, I think that's important for me to draw. This is a pod, okay. So what pod is going to have? IP. Okay, it is going to have MAC address. MAC address. This is unique for this pod. So, if this is pod 1, this has this IP, this has MAC address, unique. If you have another pod, okay, this is pod 2, this is going to have another IP. So let's say IP2 and MAC address different. So this is going to have different MAC. But this is from your pod level. When when you see from container level, because now container is not a out external device or it's not something external, it's just part of your pod. So this container and this container has same IP from outside same MAC address, same MAC, same port, same port from outside. This is from outside. When you see from outside. So if you see from outer world, so how, how this outer world is going to look like? This is how your outer world is going to look like. It has a single IP, single MAC and single port, this pod. Inside, if you say about containers, container has no IP, no port and no MAC address. Here also no IP, no port and no MAC address. Why, why do you need IP, MAC and port? Because you have to communicate with someone, right? That's the communication information. These three are the communication information, IP, MAC and port. But my question is that, my point is that you are not going outside your pod. You don't need to have a separate IP for your each container. Which means when this container has to talk to this second container, it can simply talk on for this pod level. So this pod has one more thing that is called as 127.0.0.1 if you remember if you deploy any vm or any physical server you get this interface by default you don't install it you don't install or configure this loop back is present by default in any node in any vm any physical server so here also 
when you deploy a pod this comes by default which is called it as loop back interface so this is a loop back interface assigned to your pod and if your container want to talk it can simply simply use this one it even don't need to go outside everything is happening inside so this is your uh, so no separate mac for your containers separate mac is only for your pod so this pod mac address will be different from this pod because these these are the two entities from outside but if you see this inside there is no entity these are two both are like part of same same you can say same architecture so that's the reason there is no separate mac for the containers okay chris yes see this is very first level of communication this is local communication this is your pod local in you can say container is there a way to track that communication within a uh, pod no you cannot track because it is very private everything is happening internally even from outside you cannot do anything you cannot track you cannot track okay. why because if you remember i mentioned it is an isolated zone a pod if you see whatever it is doing inside is a purely private communication or private part your host is not even responsible or interfering in any of your uh, communication or anything and there is one more thing called as pod namespace so when i say your pod namespace so there are two type of namespaces remember one is pod namespace and second one is your root namespace root namespace belongs to your host host operating system where you are running your containers so if you see this diagram your host this host whatever communication this host host is doing with its uh, resources like cpu ram and other things cpu ram networking storage see it also needs resources for its own operation so it is going to use root namespace and whatever your container is going to do it's going to call cpu ram network and storage it is going to use pod namespace so now you see the segregation or the separation of resources whatever cpu ram network storage used by this host operating system is different from this cpu ram network storage because this is also a consumer and this is also a consumer for for the resources so we have these resources so we have the cpu we have the ram we have network and then we have storage right so these are the common resources it is common for everybody it's so your host when it is going to do own functionality it's going to use this root namespace when your host when your containers are going to work they are going to use the container namespace so this is how your segregation happen so that means here whatever networking you are going to use see why i am giving you this example because here networking this networking so when you see this networking happening here it is being using this pod namespace so which means that with this pod namespace your host is not even aware your root namespace is not aware this host os is not aware what kind of networking you are doing on this part because here you remember we have different channels we have different channels to access one channel is for your root you can say your host one channel is for your pod namespace for pod so like this way you have different namespaces concept so is it fine chris so each so each network has its um so pod so pod to pod communication have its own namespace yeah pod to pod communication see 
if you say pod to pod that means you are talking about pod 1 to pod 2 there your root will this will also come in picture yeah this will also come in picture because you are going to use from one node to another node see that is next type of communication which you are asking the example uh, or what i explained you now for now is this single pod communication internally in this internal pod communication whatever network you are going to use is this network is totally isolated from your host from your host network and that's the reason you mentioned asking question that can i track a communication happening between container 1 to container 2 in a pod no you cannot track because this logical boundary will stop you to access anything or to monitor anything from inside if you see from outside is something like pod if you see the label if you try to put a trace or snoop this uh, this channel so you simply say pod namespace you simply see this pod namespace but that you don't see what exactly is happening what packets are flowing inside this container because it's private this is private communication this is fully private communication fully private means pod this container communication is fully private and remember there is a no way possible no way possible for a container from one pod to talk to container on second pod no this communication of container is only within a pod so within a pod you can talk but you cannot say that okay i want my container one to talk to second container of another pod no that is not possible then you have to follow the pod communication then you come to the second type of networking that is your pod communication it's fine can we move to the second type of uh, networking yes so we are now going to talk about the second type of example that is your pod communication that's i think is the main main important which will clarify a lot of your doubts so this is called as pod communication so this means that now i'm going to put a box called pod so this is pod one so i'm not going to put any picture of container so remember for containers i already explained you the container communication that that's it we are not going to talk about containers now we are going to talk about pod so this is pod 1 and this is pod 2 and then you can have pod 3 and then you can have pod 4 so see this pod possibility that all the four pod reside on a same node or possibility that these pods belong to different node correct so you can have a case where these two pods are on node 1 and this is on node 2 depending on your deployment and then you can have node node 4 sorry 3 so node 3 so that means you have three nodes and then you have pods running on top of your node if you have a communication where you want to pod want to talk to another pod irrespective whether you have you can say like uh, inter node communication or intra node communication i will tell both of i will cover both of them in the same communication which includes your inter node and then your intra node means you can have two pods on same node you can have a pod on another node in this way you will be having both type of communication so how this diagram will be uh, there in this case so now i'm not going to put any container so this case i'm not going to put any container here so let's see what happens so you have a pod this is your pod one and this is your pod two and let's say they are on same node same node means they are on same host So you have this, this is called as node 1. So how do we have networking? First interface is your, this NIC, right? So you have this NIC card, NIC. and this is your ETH 0, right? Then what happens? I told you one thing that pod has also interface, assume it as a VM. So, for, from networking point of view, let's assume pod is a virtual machine. 
from networking point of view it is a virtual machine right so this has something called eth1 then you have something called eth1 then what happens there is something called as virtual bridge this is called as virtual bridge what is this bridge it is there to communicate your pods so here it is going to create a virtual ethernet zero then it is going to create virtual ethernet one so this is for pod one this is for pod two this is going to be mapped here <coughs> So, if your traffic is flowing outside of your pod, it is going to land on this virtual Ethernet. Here also, if your traffic is going to, it is going to land on this virtual interface. This is called as virtual ETH1. Then you have a bridge. This bridge is to map all your interfaces, all your pod virtual interfaces. It is going to map. And then it is going to send to the queue proxy. Now you remember the service of Kubernetes that is called as queue proxy. This is called as queue proxy. This virtual bridge is running on top of your queue proxy. Then what happens? <coughs> it is going to send to the IP table. This is a layer of, you can say. So Kubernetes uses IP table or you can use IP VS, IP based virtual service. So IP table means you are going to have some mapping and then it is going to land on your Ethernet. So this Ethernet, so IP table has a mapping that queue proxy will be bringing all your uh, consolidating all your pods using this uh, uh, as it is having this virtual bridge and then it is going to take to this Ethernet zero. Now what happens in this case when you have this intra node communication. So this type of communication where pod 1 need to talk to pod 2. So if pod 1 need to talk to pod 2 this is called as intra node. Means internally node, intra node communication. Means you are not going to land on this ethernet 0. You are going to have a connection internally. So here you are going to talk this virtual ethernet 0 is going to talk to this virtual ethernet 1 here you can see this communication is happening directly here if you see this communication is happening directly let me draw with some different color so you can see this so here within pod if within the same network it's very easy for your pod to communicate but what happens that when you have an internode communication, when you say you want to have an internode communication, then there is one more important topic coming. So this one I gave an example of intranode. Intranode, you see, it's very easy. You just your virtual e see here this ETH1 is going to talk to ETH1 of second pod, and here this virtual ETH0, which is meant for your pod one, is going to talk to this virtual ETH1 which is meant for port 2 by help of your this virtual bridge. So this is you can say within the node communication. Now what happens that suppose your uh, suppose your uh, pod is outside your node. So it's so it is outside your pod uh, sorry node. So here you have second node you have second node Second node has its own interface, right? You have this ETH0. Here, this is NIC. Now, <clears throat> same way, say here you have a pod 3. So, pod 3 has its own interface, this one. And this we call it as ETH1. Let's say ETH1. Now, what will happen? The diagram will remain same across the cluster. So here also you have this virtual ETH0. 
so it's going to talk to this and then you have this virtual bridge virtual bridge is responsible for your pods landing so suppose we have one more pod here i don't have a pod at the moment so that's why i'm not going to draw any further but let's say you have some pod i am not going to give any name so here you have some pod that this interface of this pod so suppose this is also eth1 and then you have this something called v eth1 here it is talking and then this is coming on this virtual bridge if you have and some more pods this will also come to the virtual bridge then you have this cube proxy this cube proxy and then you have this ip table you have this ip table ip table and this ip table is going to land on this word ethernet so this way it happens so what what is happening see whatever case i told you previously this uh, two pods on the same node it's very fortunate that you are launching two pods and these two pods are on the same node that means you are not going outside your node but that's very rare because you don't know your pod can be deployed on any node right so you can have a case where pod 1 to talk to pod so i have a case called pod 1 so this inter node is pod 1 talking to pod 3 and this intra node is pod 1 talking to pod 2 so here you can see if i am talking from 1 to 2 it's called as intra node when i am talking from 1 to 3 it is called inter node so usually you will be finding this inter node cases always so what will happen <clears throat> how this communication will happen because this is something now tricky part here how will i go outside who is going to control who is the controller here now so here we have something called as cluster network cluster network this cluster network is something you can say a layer running on all the nodes so all the nodes are member of this cluster or you can say this cluster network is present in all the nodes so suppose you have one more node just for symbolic i'm putting you have one more node so this also will be talking to this cluster network that means whenever you deploy a kubernetes there is a cluster deployed which is called as cluster kubernetes cluster and that's why we call it as kts cluster how this kts cluster for network is going to work so there is something called as pod network pod network pod network is going to float in all the nodes and if any communication need to happen so that's the reason i told you that this pod has an ip it has an ip this pod also has ip this pod also has ip this has also ip and if you have something here that also has some ip means this cluster of this kubernetes is responsible to allocate a unique ip to all the pods so suppose no two pod can have same IP. In this network, no two pod will have same IP. This cluster manager, this Kubernetes cluster, which is going to handle your pod network. So this pod network will be allocated to each pod on unique IPs. So that's why if this pod want to talk to another pod, it can talk freely. There is no restriction. It's not like your port level communication. It is IP. This is IP based communication. IP based communication means the packet will come to virtual ETS0, it will come to a virtual bridge, it will go to Q proxy, Q proxy, it will go to IP table. From IP table, it will go to your interface. From this interface, it will directly go to the uh, destination. See, this is a cluster. So if you see, if you see this one, there is a cluster layer floating between all the nodes. So this is a cluster layer. So here is a Kubernetes cluster. Here is a cluster. This cluster, when you see, your IPs can float freely in this network, in this cluster. So if you want to talk to A to B, you are free. Now you are not dependent on any, any node or any, any specific case. Yes. 
so whatever rule you have firewall rules you have so suppose we have a firewall rule here yes. same firewall rule you are going to have here also same firewall rule you are going to have here also means it is consistent across all the nodes so any node it's not like this ip table firewall is different and here ip table firewall is different all of them are same you can say consistent the configuration is consistent so once you come from outside from here you and come to this cluster and there you can go to any destination but whatever you see here is still private still private private pod network remember this is private pod network not accessible from outside not accessible from outside you cannot access from outside right so whatever i am telling you is just internal communication between pod 1 and pod 2 you still cannot access a pod from outside or this pod cannot go outside it cannot talk to anybody outside this cluster so this is the boundary this is the logical boundary for your pod pod network you cannot go outside to the internet still internet is very far from here from here internet is still far you cannot talk it's still far that is third type of communication so you can see this this is a pod networking which includes intra and inter for your nodes so is it fine chris this pod network so do you have any questions because the third type which i'm going to now explain is the outside communication the two communication which i explain you till now is your internal communication so if i say container to container which is within pod within pod pod to pod that can be within node or outside node within and outside node then third type is your pod to external world to external world and that is you say outside cluster this is called as outside cluster so this is your incoming and outgoing incoming and outgoing two type of so the first two are the internal network internal internal to your kubernetes this is external because here you talk to the outside world here still internal so the kubernetes cluster which i explain you this comes here see cluster will come in all the cases here you don't have any outside interference it is internal communication internal pod so it's totally internal you don't have any outside interference it works on your loop back loop back of your pod loop back of pod loop back what happened is it loop back of your pod okay something is not right okay so here you have loop back of your pod here if you see the second one pod to pod i explain you how this pod to pod communication happens with the help of your kubernetes cluster network pod network you can say kubernetes cluster network kubernetes cluster network this one it will also rely on the kubernetes cluster network because here also you need to have a cluster but it needs some additional components also cluster network plus additional components Plus additional components or services you can say. 
components or services this is the third type which we will discuss so when i say the external communication then you need to have three type of scenarios so what happens you need to you can have three type of communication here so i am talking about the third one where we say external so if you see the diagram you know that the diagram which i explain you so here what we need to do here we have three type of uh, communication one is your cluster ip then we have is node port and the third one is your load balancer so i will explain all of them but i think it will take some lot of time and better let's do it uh, next time because i need some extra time for this to cover this part so chris is it okay like we uh, continue class next uh, friday 11:30 pm your time